Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. And we are back here uh, with our friend, our author, and just amazing person, man of many names. we got Michael Kell, but the real name is Jean-Michel Palikov. Can you help yeah. me say it? Yes. Yes. Yay. Well, thank you so much for being here. Uh, amazing author. Uh, there's a lot to him, his past, his history, and of course, how we can help you. And he's got many books uh, that he's going to talk about. Uh, and of course, uh, available for purchase. You can go read, you can buy new works in, in progress. And uh, I know we've touched upon some of that as well. But as an author, um, you know, he really just is just very, you'll see, as he speaks, you're going to get to know him today. If this is your first time with him, let me first start off by asking you to tell the audience a little bit about yourself. Thank you. Well, I hope everybody had a happy holiday. But um, my, my, my greatest love in life is to explore in the, in the outer realms. It sounds funny, but it's like sometimes a painting works through an artist to express itself. So the, the image is already existing. And writing books is the same way. The uh, Most of my stories come from stories that are ongoing. And I'm just the person who looks at that story and expresses what that story wants to say. Um, but what I want to do today a little bit is to tell people about my early life. Because if you understand, and you can't do it like 72 years that fast. But there's some interesting things that happened in my life, which nobody hardly believes. Well, some people do. But they're actually true. And I wanted just to mention them because there's a lot of miracles goes on in the world. And I'm not saying I'm a miracle, but miraculous things happen if you pay attention. In fact, they happen all the time. But we just haven't been taught to pay attention to small little miracles. And most miracles are small because they're easier to do. And some gigantic one, and they violate uh, natural law, such as bleeding Madonna's you know, eyes bleeding. Impossible. So um, if I could just start is that uh, I was born in Puerto Rico, like, uh, Puerto Rico, excuse me, in Saudi Arabia, um, like I think I mentioned before. And my mother was there uh, working with Bechtel. My father was there working with Bechtel. And the oil company over there is the, you know, it's called Aramco, Arabian American Oil Company. And my dad was going out there putting in the pipelines for oil and stuff and managing things. And about a year before I was born is, this is a story he told me when I was like around 12. A year before I was, when he was born, he was driving back by himself from you know, expect, expecting some things. And he saw a sandstorm coming up. And now in a sandstorm, if you can get in some place, like an oasis, which usually for some reason is more protected, I guess it's because there's sand dunes around it. So there's one up ahead. So he pulled into it. And as he pulled into it, he saw there were three camels. You know, they were tied or secured. And so he parked his car and he walked over and there's a little fire and there's three Bedouins there. My dad spoke Arabic. And he was a Muslim when he was there. Wherever he used to go work, he learned the language quickly, and he adopted their religion because it made life much easier for everybody. And um, so he went over to introduce himself, and, and they said, we've been waiting for you. No surprise, I imagine. And they said, well, sit down, and we'll tell, we got something we have to tell you. And uh, they had a coffee pot there, so they poured him coffee with sugar. And, uh, and, and, the, and, the, and the guy in the center, apparently, was the head Bedouin guy, said, you are here because we asked you to come with us. And it's something very important we have to tell you. And we we lifted up the sandstorm just to bring you over here. And the sandstorm won't bother us. But we have to tell you that, you know, that my friend to the right is a very good astrologer and knows the stars. Now, usually in Islam, they don't like astrology because they think it's like sorcery. Yeah. But he is really good at it. And uh, and so he told us some uh, some some way some stars were in, in the heavens, and he said, "You got to come look at this." And we saw what he saw was true. And he said, "This heralds the birth of an angel on Earth, which is rather rare." And um, so we have to tell you. And they chatted for a while, and and he said, "You're going to have a son born on November first. I mean, they did in Arabic, okay? But okay, Arabic. okay, okay. Wow. On November first at two p.m." Apparent solar time. Because there's, I don't know if there's solar time. It's one of the few places that actually they're off the clock a little bit. And so he said, okay, thanks, fine. I don't think he believed him. And so my mom got pregnant. And I happened to be born at 1.57 p.m. Apparent solar time on November 1st, which happens to be wow. all Saints Day. Wow. And um, so 
you know, so that's, she told me a story, and I don't know if it's true or not, because he was a good storyteller too, but it seems to be true based on things happening later on. And, and so I always wondered what I was supposed to do. Okay. And one of the things I really liked when, um, you know, when Lawrence Rabia came out, you know, and it's a scene in there, you know, when they, I guys they lift their muskets, you know, mm -hmm. and go, Lawrence, Lawrence, Lawrence. I was thinking, oh, that'd be kind of cool. Yeah. Just say, Jean -Michel, Jean -Michel. yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, but I never went back to Saudi Arabia and I just sort of forgot about it. But then when I was three, uh, we'd moved to Puerto Rico, which I mentioned before. Yes. Mm -hmm. My mom it was in the midst of having the, my, my youngest brother. I had two brothers, my youngest one. And it was only like about a year and a half, but she was had a really bad pregnancy because she's a little bit older. And, and my other brother was a real troublemaker, even though he was only like a year and a half, but he was always into things. And, and so across the street, there was a very small set of houses. That, you know, the Catholic nuns took care of women that got kicked out of the house by their family. OK, because they're pregnant, you know, so they're evil and harlots. And the ladies who ran this house, that's, 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 that's spirit, Miller Superior was named Teresa, you know, said, no, God doesn't love it, doesn't hate people that make mistakes. In fact, God loves pregnant women without marriage, probably more than anything else, because, you know, because God knows how hard it is to raise be a single mom, especially mm -hmm. in a prejudicial society. And so we we left the convent, came over here, and this is what we take care of. We get them jobs, we find a place to live, you know, and wherever they need to do. So, so I used to go visit, you know, visit them. And, uh, and and so one day they came to my mom's house and knocked on the door, and the maid answered. And uh, they said, can we talk to Miguel's mother? He's called me Miguel. Mother and and they did and so Sister Teresa talked to her and knew she was having problems and said you know we can take Miguel off your hands so to speak because he likes everybody over here he's he's learning Spanish really fast and he can just live with us and that way you don't have to worry about him and so she agreed strangely enough but she did so I moved over there and 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 the, and the nurse and the nun's really nice but there's one novitiate named Anna Marie who was like seventeen and she and I bonded right away and I'm pretty sure it's from past life stuff. Mm -hmm. just because what happened and things and uh so i spent like two 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 uh, like probably two almost three years there and then with the nuns helping out and stuff and so anna marie and i got very close and at close. what age were you now you were you were five well i left when like five and a half so okay. i was there like three years i mean like two years two and a half okay. years i don't know exactly so i don't remember the dates and uh you know and so we got very very close doing things and i'll help her out and things I, mean, I, I lived in the room, no big deal, but you know, it's, it's the only place they had. And so they, she had a, a friend who was a, an older nun named Agnes Louise. And Agnes Louise used to be a professor. And, and one day when we were visiting her, and she always knew like when we were going to be there, try to sneak up on her, but couldn't do it. And she'd go, okay, Miguel, I see you. You can't see me, I'm behind a pillar. I see you, come on. Mm -hmm. So one day she told us a story about a book she had. And, and, and this book was, was was written by someone named Gabriel, not the angel. Another oh, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and so uh, Agnes Louise spent all the extra free time we had teaching me metaphysics, you know, and religion. But it wasn't Catholic religion, you know, totally. It was a little more advanced and things. And, and so during that thing, I would have visions of, of, a, of a beautiful lady named Ariel. Okay. And... What I found out, contrary to the Catholics and the Protestants, actually, the Trinity is not thought of properly because they leave out gender. Okay. You know? And so there is so, there is a, like a grandfather, grandfather and a grandmother, you know, relative to them. And there's a mother and a father, and there's Jesus, and he has a sister because gender has to be balanced because it can't be out of balance. So the universe would even be the worse place than it is if it could be here. And so Ariel was, was Jesus' sister in in these worlds and so i spent a lot of time with her you know because she come visit me and tell little baby give me kids little motherly stuff but they started teaching me all kinds of things from this book you know and then they taught me and Marie taught me to read you now it's fast so i read to learn how to read fast in spanish in spanish and I, I read this book and stuff and so between being predicted and what's going on is i was i was building up my own theology wow. starting three you know, it took a long time to do it. And then I was physically in it and stuff. But Anna Marie had had a really bad life. 
is that she, he, her mother died when when she was born, and, and her father was very rich. And his father was so mad at Anna Marie because for, for, her mother died that he sent him to be taken care of by a caretaker in his, one of his houses and her husband. And there was a you know gardener there, and these people were were nice, but they did not have the capability to love anything. But they weren't mean. Okay, they were just. What can I say? Unlovable. And so she grew up all by herself, except for an imaginary friend named Eugenia. And the only people who were nice to her were, were the nuns, because because she let, he would let her go to church on Sunday. But he had to do his Catholic. And um, but he, but he, but she couldn't go any other time. And so, but she was supposed to be in puberty. She had a governess then to teach her some stuff. But when she came, she got out of the bath. The governess came in and saw that she didn't have any pubic hair. And she said, "Let me see on your arms. No hair." And and have a read of what's going on, and he's having to take her to the doctor. So he took her to the doctor, and the doctor said, Well, she's perfectly fine, but she's not going to have babies. There's no way she's not going to finish, you know, maturation. Mm-hmm. And uh, so her dad gets really mad then because he couldn't even palm her off on somebody yeah. with a dowry, unless she was beautiful. And so he sent her to the nunnery. And so the nuns took a long time to rehabilitate her in terms of getting comfortable with people because she was afraid. And uh, and so when I met her, she told me that story one time, which I thought was pretty sad. And so, so, uh, so, so Agnes Louise and I one day decided that she can have a birthday party. It's like her nineteenth birthday, and the nuns aren't supposed to have birthday parties. But Agnes, uh, said, I don't care. She needs a birthday party because yeah. she needs to know that people really care about her, and they yeah. got about her. And so, you know, so we said okay, and so we went to to you know she uh, Agnes Louise. Um, Found a restaurant to go to that she knows people in it because she'd been there a long time. Mm-hmm. And, and then uh, Anna Marie and I went to the library just because she'd never been to the library. Neither did I, but I thought it'd be fun to go there. So we spent time in the library. Then after the library, you know, we wanted to do something. And this is the point I want to read because it's hard to tell a story in its sure. entirety. Okay. I think we have time. Yes, we do. Go for it. And um, so when we left the library, I told sister, that's Anna Marie. Mom, I used to call her Mummy. Mummy, your birthday is not yet over. We need to take a walk and I'll buy you a treat where I saved up some money for you. So we were strolling towards the restaurant chosen by Sister Agnes Louise. And when we got there, I took her inside. Sitting in the corner was Agnes Louise with her present wrapped for Mummy. Agnes Louise waved us over to the table. We sat down. And she said, Today, Anna Marie, we're going to celebrate your NATO day. It is our secret, so we do not tell the other sisters. But to tell the truth, this is all Miguel's idea. We really wanted you to give to get, for us to give you a birthday party, so you would know that you are special to us and that we love you. Louise and Sister Anna Marie started to cry for such warmth and joy poured into her sweetheart, the kingdom of the Holy Family within. She did not know what to say, but she finally realized that she was really and honestly loved by Grandmother and me. I used to call her. Yeah, Sister Anna Marie, Grandmother. Her father's meanness was now unimportant. She wiped her eyes, saying in a broken voice, I love both of you, for you two are my real family. I was never a bad little girl, but I was a strong little girl. Thank you both. Sister Agnes Louise and I had tears of joy in our eyes. Sister Agnes Louise said, Enough. We are here to celebrate the holy day. The family, the holy family kissed your birth with a soul seed, not to be emotional. She cried out, Jose, we're ready for Anna Marie's birthday dinner. Jose, the owner of the restaurant, served as our waiter. We all had the best meal in our lives. Well, my life was less than four years, but it was really pretty good. Mm-hmm. After our dinner was finished, Jose came out to the kitchen with a birthday cake, having 19 burning candles. The waiters of the kitchen staff were playing some, some musical instruments and singing a Spanish birthday greeting. Sister Anna Marie did not know what to do, for, but she was really happy. All she could say was, thank you, Holy Mother. God bless all of you. I never had a birthday celebration ever. Jose placed the cake on the table and told Sister Anna Marie to make a grand wish and blow out the candles so the smoke and Holy Spirit would carry her wish to heaven. She closed her eyes, took her hand, my hand into hers, took in a deep breath, and blew out all the candles. Everyone clapped. Jose said, Bravo, Sister, bravo. Jose handed Sister the knife, cake knife, saying, Cut enough cake, bake, excuse me, cut enough slices for all of us here so we can honor your holy day for eating some of your cake. Rita, Bring out some sangria for everyone, even our little gentleman. So on that mon- mon- momentous day, a miracle was accomplished in San Juan. 
For when I looked into mummy's heart, I saw that Ariel and Holy Mother had removed every last speck of darkness and pain and placed it with the purest glow. For the first time in her life, mummy's or glow with a soft golden white light, which everyone can see at the party. I saw that both divine Ariel and Holy Mother were standing next to mummy with her arms wrapped around her neck. I understood why mummy was glowing, but I said nothing. I looked over at sister Anne, Agnes Louise and I knew she saw what I saw. Rita was a spirit of wife was the first say. Everyone, look, the Holy Virgin Mother and the Holy Spirit have blessed this child for she shines with the holy light. It is a miracle, eh? A real miracle. God has blessed all of us. Praise to our Lord and his mother. Everyone present repeated after her. Praise to our Lord and our mother and his mother. After things had quieted down, the table was cleared, Anna Marie had stopped glowing. Both of us noticed that she had permanently transformed, as she was no longer burdened by her past emotional pain. When I looked deeply into her eyes, I saw that she and I were one divine eye thou, two in manifestation, but only one in essence. She and I were there in the bedchamber with room sufficient enough for one unified ego. I saw that her love for me was now unconditional and that her love had been forever. Truly, the Holy Family brought to all of us a wondrous miracle. It goes on, but that's probably enough. And, and so the, the reason I like that story like, in, in, in Anna Maria stuff is it's always made me have a really tender heart, especially for single moms. Mm -hmm. I'm nice to single dads too, but single moms yeah. always catch my eye and my heart. That's why you love me. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, oh, it's, it's, it's being a mom is an impossible job, but being a mom without like a family to help you. I mean, you That's have grand, overseas, they have grandmas and grandpas, so it helps. But to do it by yourself is like impossibly impossible. Mm -hmm. You know, and I don't think they're respected enough in our society for how powerful women they are. You know, but they're still kind and nice and loving and sweet and feminine, but they're powerful, powerful female warriors. And, you know, and I just wish more people would see that. Well, thank you. I agree. And I, as a single mom, I could so empathize and relate. It's not easy. Uh, and let me just ask, Coach, just back to you. So you were in uh, in Puerto Rico. So you had two siblings? Yeah. You one was, my, 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 Stephen was born in California. That's my next brother. My little oh, brother okay. was born in, in Puerto Rico. Got it. But That's so your mom, mom so your so your mom, I didn't know this, but so your mom was single when she was there, living alone. No, 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 no. My mom was a single. The, the single ladies were at the at the at the nun's house, and, mm -hmm. and, and so I play with the kids because some have kid, you have a kid, okay? Got it. Mm -hmm. And so I was kind of like the host for the kids, sort of. Aww. But it's just you know seeing all them and talking to them, you know, and they were young, you know, and they just you know, most of them just got you know talked into somebody, somebody loved them, and they didn't really. You know, so it was sad. And um, so that's why trying to live unconditionally is what I really like to do. But I don't do a good job. I don't do a terrible job. But it works best when it's, you're surprised. Yeah. Wow. You know? But that's an amazing yeah. story. So you actually lived over there with them for just two years or so, right? Yep. And then she died. At the end, I, I, I went, my parents went on vacation, on vacation for like a week or two. I mean, in Puerto Rico. I came back. Anna Marie, Sister Teresa said, Marie is, is sick. She's going to oh. die. I, I know what that meant, really. And I think she had she had consumption in those days. This is a long time ago, but it was tuberculosis. And oh. uh, you know, so she said, go, yeah, go talk to her before she leaves. Got to go talk to her before she leaves. So I ran in there crying, of course, and hugged her. You know, she was like sweating and had to lift her up because she's really weak. You know, and I saw Holy Mother and Ariel were there with her. You know, Agnes Weed wasn't there, so nobody else would see them except for me. And, yeah. uh, you know, and, she's, and she smiled as best she could. She goes, I'm, I was so afraid I'd die without seeing you. But I'm going to wait ah. for you. You know, wait for you in heaven. You know, and then Holy Mother said, it's okay. She'll come. If you need some prompts, she and I will come down and help you. Wow. You know, right? And then she passed. And then Sister Teresa took me outside so we could cry. And she was crying too. Because Anna Marie, for all the bad things that happened to her, was the nicest, sweetest person you could ever meet. You know, but but she could do things too, strong things. Yeah. But she really was strong inside. She just didn't know it. So I think she over those two and a half years or so, you know, I mean, not only did I grow, but she grew a whole bunch. Mm -hmm. You see, and the thing is, is like I know she's my soulmate. 
Oh, wow. How, wait, so how, how old was she when she passed? She's like, probably like 20. She's turned 20 or just oh, before. Oh, my goodness, 20. so young. Wow. Yeah. So she didn't get to fulfill her destiny. But the love story is nice, you know. They come yeah. in all varieties. Oh, my goodness. You must think about her each and every day, right? I'm sure not a day goes by. Now, um, that's almost true. Some days I get so full of stupid things they have to do that I don't have time to bother her. Right. I, well, uh, well, thank you for sharing that. My goodness. Now, so as in all of your writings and your work, clearly you were just reading. That was what were you just reading from specifically? That's gonna be my, it's called The Curious Life of the Good Doctor. So okay. that was, that's my name of the, my radio show. I had was a good doctor. Mm -hmm. and so I'm going to work. I don't know if I ever get it done because I'm too busy doing other things. But I'd like to get it done because, as you can see, I have a I've lived a charmed life. It hasn't been an easy one, okay? But it's been a life that I that I often look forward to the challenges. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes it doesn't come out very well, you know, from normal people's point of view. But every time you're challenged, you stand up for what's right. You know, they're going to kill you. You know, you should put your prison in America, very long at least. And, you know, and it made me strong. Wow. And so wow. I have to go down, but I still haven't quite figured out exactly what I'm supposed to do after promising God I'd be God's helper when I was three years before, before the nuns. Wow. Is that when it was? That's when you when you made the promise to them? <sighs> yeah. And, but um, ironically, you learned the story, and your father—you didn't know your father didn't tell you the story about him um, in the sandstorm uh, meeting uh, them, who mentioned that he was going to have a son who was going to be an angel. He didn't, so you didn't know that. But at the age of three, you were already a twelve. But so at the age of three, though, you were called in with the nuns. Wow. So, yeah, that's like a—you're clearly your path and your destiny. And wow, that's been interesting. I think people's lives are much more interesting than they sometimes think. Yeah. You know, because they're not. But actually, one, I don't know how much time we have, but one thing I want to say is that I want, I want to talk about the freedom exercise. It's my new project, okay? And I'm really behind on it. Not the exercise, that was easy how to do it, but how to do it like in a 12 week course, uh -huh. high end, you know, course. But, you know, the, the key, when Jesus, 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 Buddha said a lot of things that were true. All of the Vedanta guys said things are true, you know, the gurus and the swamis. So everybody said everybody sees the truth, but they interpret it sometimes not exactly in the most beneficial way. Mm -hmm. You know, but when Jesus, I think I talked about this, you know, but when you know Jesus talked about the kingdom of heaven and little children, I mean, that's a place that everybody's born into. Yeah. But, you, but you're not allowed to remember it. You have to re recover it. But when you find it, you can start working with it. And you can call it whatever you want. Names are just words, but you're not the same person anymore. You know, because there's a power inside you. You know, that's calm, unperturbed. And so, yeah, your body will get preserved, your brain will get perturbed a little bit, but you can deal with things really, really well. You know, and, you know, and people used to ask me, well, actually one time, I could have a church I run, and uh, we wanted to get an exemption from taxes, okay? And mm -hmm. so, and they didn't like my church. It's a good Christian church, though. And uh, so I was in there, and the guy goes, you know, it's funny, I read your thing, and it's it <laughs> the first thing you recommend people do when they, if they want, you know, come wow. to your churches. It's to stop believing in stuff, mm -hmm. you know? And he goes, do you believe in God? And I go, I don't believe in anything in the way wow. you talk about it. Because why would I believe in something if I know it? Yeah. You know? And, and I said, you guys are just out of here. You know? Get out of here. You don't even understand anything. <laughs> because, you know, and you can't get that feeling. And you can call, you know, call Holy Family. Your image you want to create is fine. But there really is something divine in our universe. Yeah, and trying to be a pure atheist is a hard argument to, to talk about. Being a traditional Protestant is a hard argument to talk about, in my opinion. Being a Catholic is a hard argument to talk about because there's so much stuff that's come in that's unnecessary, and it wasn't even in the, old, in the New Testament. You know, so, wow, empower people need to really be empowered. Yeah. <sighs> Amazing. Wow. Another story and to add to the works. And I know we didn't even establish, I mean, for people who may not know of you yet, uh, they're learning, but um, all of your books, where can we find them? How can we uh, contact you? Um, could you share your, your website or our contact information? Okay. In order to buy that book, you know, God's Greatest Miracle, Tell to the Angels, the best place, you can go to any, you, know, you can go to any books, you can go to Barnes and Noble, 
But if you go to Amazon, I need, we need more reviews. And it's not because the reviews we have are bad. It just, you gotta, if you buy a book, you leave a review, it helps the author a lot because then it gets advertised. You know, yeah. you don't have a ton of reviews, it doesn't get advertised very well. Yeah. So that's the best place to go now. And the reason is, if you go to our website, you can't buy anything because they haven't given me access to demand on, you know, demand on print yet. Yeah. I don't, it's messed up. <laughs> so I can't really do that. But, if you, you know, and the best place to leave a message is to go, to, if you want to talk to me, is go to email at enlightenment123 numbers.org. Beautiful. Thank you. And uh, we still got three minutes left. I don't want to cut you short. Um, how did you want to end this off? I mean, we have a new year ahead of us. Any advice or guidance since you are an angel? See, Michael to, or Michelle? Talk yes. about that because a lot of people <laughs> say that, okay? And it's, uh -huh, it's not really. an easy place to be if you yeah. think about it. We can wow. talk about it one time. But what I like to say is that I am really happy that I met you. Thank you. you know, I mean, you are the most radiant princess in all of Christendom. Thank you. Am I an angel too? Is that what you're going to tell me now? You're passing it along to me? I didn't know. <laughs> no. well, well, hold on. Angel. Get it? Angel. J-I-L-L. -L. Could be angel. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a good one. Is this our last time together? No. I don't think oh, so. okay. I thought we were signing off saying goodbye. I was like, what? I didn't well, actually, know. I think we might know because I know there's... there's so I'm confused, like how many business there are, you know, because <laughs> they know. keep talking to me, you know, and so what about do it? So okay, I'll do that, you know. So I know we have at least more, but I have more visits, so I don't know how they handle it. Perfect. So hopefully it's with you. Well, I'm just the host. I just get my schedule each day who I'm talking to, but clearly I think we're working together. I just wasn't sure the way you were signing off. I thought it was a goodbye. No, um, no, 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 no. Sorry, kind of you, but um, no, I'm glad we're going to speak again. Uh, uh, yeah. And, you know, the new year here, a lot of us start to make. Resolutions, not everybody believes in those, but it is a new start to a new chapter, to a new year, to a new, and um, it could be very inspirational to so many, and also it could be very depressing for so many. So um, what I just want to leave off and say, you know, looking forward to speaking with you again in the new year, because your positivity and creativity and your stories, I think, can really help someone out there um, to believe in there's just so much more to the life that we're living here on a daily basis. And now I'm getting so um, deep and emotional, but for real, um, we need to talk to more good people like you because you bring a lot of joy uh, uh, to me, uh, to our listeners. And uh, now knowing that you're even a real, a real angel. See, you could just tell by talking to someone, they're good people, I think. And now to even know more of your backstory. Wow. 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 Thank you. Thank you. All right. So if we I want to reach out to you one more time, tell say, us the website. Tell us the website one more time. A website is wor worlds of JM Poyco, no spaces. Dot com. <laughs> Perfect. Sorry. Thank you so com. much. That's okay. You have a fantastic day. Are you looking for even more of the podcasts and hosts that you love? The Podcast Business News Network is proud to announce that you now have even more ways to listen live. Check out the MyTuner Radio, Online Radio Box, and Simple Radio apps on iOS and Android, or find us online. Search for Business News Network on MyTuner-Radio.com, or search Podcast Business News Network on Streama.com and OnlineRadioBox.com slash US. Take your podcasts on the go, and don't miss a minute of the action. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day -day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knocked down, I mean, it's... It's crucial. Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage free, fully adaptive, handicap accessible house. And there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit hfotusa.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's. It's going to be okay.